Forty-three, how to live with yourself, Part Nine, God and others, January the twenty-sixth, nineteen fifty-four. Good morning, friends. One of the facts I've been trying to illustrate these past few months is this: that the hardest person we have to live with is ourselves. No one gives us half the trouble we give ourselves. Now, some people will dispute this fact. They insist that their lives would actually be very simple if all they had to do was to live with themselves. The trouble comes from their husbands or wives, neighbors, friends, or bosses. There is no denying, of course, that other people will give us considerable trouble at times in this world. Being a sinful world, it's never smooth sailing. We all have our share of headaches that somebody else thought up for us. All this is true, and yet a person can live in very trying circumstances, put up with a completely worthless husband or a trying wife, and still live in peace and happiness if they have made their peace with God and are accordingly at peace with themselves. The world has countless people in it who live a happy life in unhappy circumstances. Those who feel that their life is being ruined by some man or woman or certain trying circumstances are usually their own worst troublemaker. Their constant complaint is that life is shortchanging them, and that people have taken advantage of them. They enjoy brooding about their troubles and nurse a feeling of hostility and resentment towards the whole world, and especially towards those who do the most for them. They refuse to believe in goodness and suspect a dirty motive behind even the kindest act. They cannot believe in goodness because they themselves are incapable of it. And they refuse to believe in anything better than themselves. Such people cannot live with themselves any more than they can live with others. They would like to have you believe that their lives were peaceful before they met, married, or began working for so and so, but don't you believe it? Their whole life has been a volcano, and even when quiet on the surface, has been burning and boiling underneath. The test of our lives, you see, is how we live with the Lord and with others. No man can live peacefully with himself who does not meet these two qualifications. First of all, we must love the Lord with all our heart, mind, and being. This means relying not on ourselves but on Him, trusting not ourselves but the Lord. Now, when you love someone, you want to live with Him, have all of His company you can get. If we love God. We enjoy his presence and companionship. We are then never alone. Quote, For he hath said, "I will never leave thee nor forsake thee." Hebrews thirteen five. Thus, living with ourselves becomes a very different proposition. It involves living with the Lord, and that takes away the stillness and dead bitterness out of our hearts and gives us a constant assurance and peace. Second, we must love our neighbor as ourself. We are all of us good at talking peace, but very poor at living it. We believe that men and nations should get along peaceably, and then argue or fight about some little thing that doesn't matter. Our Lord said that the practical test of our faith is how we live with others. The Pharisees were precisely those who believed and did nothing, while the Good Samaritan was ready to help a man who belonged racially and religiously to a group that despised him. Only a man who lives with the Lord can consistently do that. He lives in peace and therefore carries peace. The troubles he has are not the important things in his life, but the Lord. He can say with David, "I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for Thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety." Psalm four eight. Old Thomas a Kempis said. Set thyself first in peace, and then thou shalt be able to give peace to others. Don't blame others for ruining your life. Probably you ruined it before you ever met them. If your inner life is a disturbed one, then you are the disturber of the peace, and no one else. A happy life is possible in unhappy circumstances if we live with the Lord, and if we are unhappy, it is usually likely that we have not made our peace with Him. Or are unwilling to commit our lives unreservedly into His hands, receiving all things as from Him. 
You cannot live with yourself unless you can first live with the Lord and then with others. Paul commanded us, saying, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Romans 12.18 Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Romans 13.8